Welcome to learning about high blood pressure. Let me introduce Dr. Christina Miller. She's double board certified in emergency and integrative medicine. And she is with plant-based telemedicine. She's certified in 23 different states. And you can connect. Her website is plantbasedtelehealth.com. I'm Jean Schumacher. I am co-founder of the Pregnancy Advantage, where we help women to get their bodies pregnant ready. And especially if you're having trouble conceiving or before you go down that in vitro fertilization rabbit hole. <laughs> and I also have a website, simplyplantbased.net, where there's a lot of resources to help you go plant-based. Good evening, Dr. Miller. Good evening, Jean. It's wonderful to see you. As always, a pleasure. Uh, we're, connect, we're talking um, about, high, obviously, high blood pressure. <laughs> and last week, we talked about what it is and salt, and we talked about a lot of other things. But tonight, we're going to talk about activities and foods that can help you lower high blood pressure. So why don't we start, start with an activity? Well, I want to start with an easy one, which is exercise. So we know that exercise, including cardio and even resistance training, um, can lower blood pressure significantly. In fact, my patients will tell me their blood pressure read, and then they'll tell me the read after they exercise. And it'll go from something like 150 over 90 down to 120 over 80 just after exercise. It's, it's impressive how much. And what's happening is you vasodilate, you increase blood flow as you're exercising, but you also release these mediators, right? We know about like endorphins that make you feel happy. So you, you release these mediators throughout your body and there's several of them, lots. And they will help, they help relax you and keep your blood vessels relaxed for several hours. It's been shown in studies. Your, so um, your, your blood vessels will stay relaxed. Your blood pressure will stay lower for several hours. So I have a couple of my really hypertensive patients. I'm working so hard on lifestyle to help them lower and get off their medications. And they're doing little bits of exercise kind of throughout the day and keeping it lower by doing that. So it's powerful. And it can be walking. It can be cycling. It can be swimming. Whatever people like. That's the fun part about it. Awesome. Excellent. So, yeah, exercise doesn't have to be, you don't have to be going to the gym and pumping, you know, bench pressing 400 pounds, you know, just whatever. Here's the thing, whatever you like to do, do it. That's it. I started roller skating again. I, I was going to say rollerblading. That's so funny. I love that too. I know. Yeah, I know. I just started doing that again. I'm not very good. Need some practice, but that's okay. But getting out there, power walking, walking with a friend, getting out, just yeah. getting outside. Yeah. You don't have to join the gym. You don't have to get outside, go garden, go yeah. whatever, whatever floats yeah. your boat. Whatever brings yeah. your heart rate up a little bit. You got to raise your heart rate in order to get those mediators to be released to get the benefits. Well, another activity that I like, we talked about a little bit last week is this machine called Respirate. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. really helps. It, it straps around your chest and it monitors your breathing and it guides you down over. It's a 15 minute like meditation that guides you down to, and I get down to about four breaths a minute and it really, really slows you down. I usually do it before I go to sleep because mm -hmm. I am so relaxed. Yeah. I just, I just go right to sleep and mm -hmm. It is wonderful. And I also know that if I'm feeling stressed or, uh, and I'm one of the weird people that actually get blood pressure headaches. And so I know if I have a blood pressure headache, I can go respirate and it will help my, my, my headache without question. So and I want to point out to anyone listening that what Jean means when she's weird there is a lot of people don't feel when their blood pressure is high. And so they have no idea. And so that's where it's super dangerous. Whereas Jean actually can feel it that it's high and is a headache. But often um, if you're waiting to see if you have a headache for your blood pressure to be high, don't wait for that because most people don't feel a headache. Yeah. So what are some other things that people can do? Well, uh, one of my favorite ones that I have picked up myself for my own health issues over a few years ago, because I saw some good data on it was yoga. So yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, all of those have data on it that they lower blood pressure. And I think it has something to do with the focus, the mindfulness, you're letting go of your stressors. And in doing that, your blood, your, your heart rate comes down, your blood pressure, they have you taking nice, slow, deep breaths, again, similar to your respirate. So you're focused on your, your yoga, 
you're taking these slow deep breaths or your tai chi same you know which is like a moving meditation if no if people haven't haven't ever done it tai chi is wonderful for older people people with balance issues but it's i recommend it for all my hypertensive patients to look into it if that's something you can do cheer yoga if you can't move if you're limited if you have bad arthritis it's actually beneficial for arthritis if you can do it as well so in addition to your blood pressure there's a lot of benefits but there's real data with it with blood pressure so another good activities to look into right my one of my personal favorites though is before i go to bed I get in the hot tub. Oh, yeah. I do. I do. I'm not going to lie. And that vasodilates, mm-hmm. it will drop. And I've even had like times when I've gotten out of the hot tub because I will go in there and they don't recommend that you stay more than 15, 20 minutes. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And I've stayed in there for a while because like, like either I've had a headache or I just, I'm stressed and I might be in there or I'm watching TV. <laughs> I bring my little TV down and I'm watching TV while I'm in the hot tub and I'd be getting into a program and I don't want to get out because it's cold, you know? So I'm in the hot tub watching the TV and, you know, and I get out and all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh, I'm a little dizzy. So I will sit down because that has really dropped my blood pressure. And I was shocked when I, when I got upstairs and I took my blood pressure, I was shocked at how low it was actually. Mm -hmm. So that is something to think about. So really, and if you are, if you're normal and you get into a hot tub, you shouldn't stay very long because that can drop your blood pressure, your temperature. Absolutely. A hot shower can do that too. If you stand in the hot shower for a long time on those cold days, you come out, you can have low blood pressure. And I've had a lot of people who feel lightheaded. People can have syncope where they pass out after a shower. So similar to your hot tub, but it is a good activity to relax you as well as help vasodilate you. So yeah. How gone take me away. <laughs> Honestly, oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just so, so relaxing. You can Honestly. use essential oils or those bath, bath salts a little bit. And, and yeah, a lavender will help relax you even a little bit more and take you all your senses. It's an activity and mindfulness, right? Where you smell, right. you feel it, you, you're, you're enveloped in this healing environment as you lower your blood pressure. So another thing we wanted to talk about tonight was foods that can help reduce your blood pressure as well. Because Dr. Bill and I are both about trying to get your blood pressure down without having to take medications. Because first of all, all medications are going to have side effects. They're going to have side effects. And the medications themselves are not going to heal your body. There's not no medication on this planet that is going to heal your high blood pressure. It'll help to drop it but it's not getting to the root cause of why you have high blood pressure. So that's part of, part of what we are very much about is getting to the root cause of why you have high blood pressure. Cause there's a lot of reasons. It's a symptom, right? So food is one of them. And we want to help you to learn about the different foods that can help you to reduce your blood pressure naturally. You know, obviously if you need to take medication, you do take medication, but some foods can help you to reduce it. So why don't you start off with the first one, Doc? Well, one of my favorite ones is the dark leafy green vegetables. If you, if, especially when you chew them, when you're in your, in the, when they're in your mouth or you blend them in your smoothie, but either way it's been shown to be effective, but especially when you chew it in your mouth and you release the nitric oxide from them, which is, it helps it helps release nitric oxide from your blood vessels. I mean, and that helps vasodilate your blood vessels and significantly lower your blood pressure. And in fact, that was part of Dr. Esselstyn's plan when he did his studies back in the, what, when was that? 1990s, 1980s. He was doing his studies with some um, 18 patients with severe cardiovascular disease and ir- irreversible. They were not able to even get surgery, any procedures. And he put them on dark leafy greens, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and on purpose, and he had them chew it. And that was one of his mechanisms to help them lower their blood pressure, lower their cholesterol and, and dissolve away their plaque. So there's really good data on that. And they're good raw and cooked, but they're better raw. So if you have high blood pressure, and if that's something you're trying to reverse, I would, I recommend to my patients, and I would recommend to other people to eat it throughout the day, the raw greens. And that can be a smoothie, a salads, um, you know, making a veggie wrap with something, um, somehow including veggies, adding raw veggies to a soup, but getting it in throughout the day. 
I agree. I, the raw, definitely a lot better in terms of nutrients, but I'll tell you when you can lightly steam some kale and put a little bit of balsamic vinegar on that. Mm, mm, mm. And it is like, good like that too. So I'm not t- telling people not to eat that because that, yeah, mm-hmm. you eat more of it that way and which is good too. Exactly. Exactly. But I start my day out with a smoothie every day and I put in like handfuls, handfuls. You would not be able to eat this amount of, of greens without question. And so it's a lot, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it will definitely change what comes out of you in the solid <laughs> form. Just saying, <laughs> not that I'm trying to get gross or anything. Mm-hmm. Leafy greens. All right. That's number one, without question. Leafy greens can help. Oh my God. On so many different levels. All right. Berries. They are like one of my top, top, top things to eat. I, that's my new crack is berries. <laughs> I'm very, very addicted Blueberries and strawberries contain antioxidant compounds called anthocyanins. Researchers did a large, huge study of 34,000 people with hypertension, and they found that those who had the highest intakes of anthocyanins, mainly from blueberries and strawberries, had an 8% reduction of high blood pressure compared to those with low anthocyanin intake. So I'm, berries, oh my God, I like, in my smoothie, I have several cups of blueberries. I get the wild blueberry. I go to Trader Joe's and I get the wild blueberries from Maine, you know, that are organic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I make the smoothie for my husband and myself. I use a whole bag of those Trader Joe's in one smoothie, a whole <laughs> bag. So yeah, we're getting them. Yeah, those are good. And they also, berries also have the polyphenols, which are compounds that actually your microbiome act on. And so by eating berries, you're actually talking directly with your microbiome and making them healthier. And that also plays a role because there's the gut heart connection. And so there's some evidence that that has a role too in blood pressure. So it's, it's so interesting. Berries are amazing. And all berries, it's not just blueberries. So eat your strawberries, raspberries, like get them all in. Blackberries. But I would caution you to make sure that you get them organic. And the reason being is that besides you, there's a lot of other things that like berries, you know, birds and insects and other things. So to keep those things away from them, the berries, they use a lot of pesticides and those pesticides are absorbed into the berries. And because the berries are so highly concentrated, you are getting a big bang of, of toxins when you're eating those berries as well. So if you go organic, you're not getting quite the same level of toxins. For sure. Always choose organic if you can. It's better for you. It's better for the for the environment. However, there are studies and it still shows if you can't afford them or you don't have access to them, you're still going to get benefits. So still eat berries, even if you can't afford organic. But absolutely, if you can, always you should try to get them organic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And even you don't have to get the fresh frozen. You can get them. I get them on sale all the time. Costco. I know they're awesome there. That's Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So that is one thing that I do recommend. Even if you can't, there's a list called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. So, you know, look at those two lists and see which ones they recommend to buy organic. If you can't, you know, if you're on a a limited budget and I get it, been there, done that. So, (laughs) you know, but let me just put it this way. Your health is worth working for. Okay. I'd rather pay, you're going to either pay the doctor or you're going to pay the grocer. And frankly, I'd rather pay the grocer. No disrespect, doc, but I'd rather pay the grocer and get my health back and to see you as for my wellness visit once a year. <laughs> so what else you got up your sleeve? Um, I have a good one to share and that is cacao so or cocoa powder. So the raw stuff unprocessed, unsweetened, no dairy in it. And there is some really good data that that stuff is good, as tasty as it is, that it also vasodilates us. So they did studies where they put the blood pressure cuff on and they watched how long it took after eating, if it, if your blood vessel re-expanded. And the people who ate the cacao had significantly faster improvements in how fast it expanded. People, if they added sugar or milk to it, it took over three hours to expand. But the people without had immediate vasodilation. And so we recommend at least over 70% cocoa to 
to get the benefits. And I, I recommend if you can, especially if you have high blood pressure and you're trying to reverse to even go higher than that. If you can do cocoa powder, like in a smoothie or make one, you know, make a dessert with some dates or something, but at least over 70% and only one square. If you do get a chocolate bar, because if you start eating too much, then there is sugar in it. It still tastes good. It's sweetened. And then the high calories start to negate the benefits of it. So just that little bit of cocoa though, um, I think that is such a, what a great thing. That's something people like so much that you can have a little bit of it and have some benefits. I know. Well, one of the things I love to do is to make popsicles. What I do is I start with usually a cup of almond milk and I'll start with a banana and then I add one to two tablespoons of the cocoa powder and I'll throw in a couple of measurable dates, you know, for a little bit of sweetness. And to take it to the next level, I'll take a few pieces of shredded coconut along with some oatmeal and I'll I'll process that in the blender just, you know, so it gets chunky. And you think you're eating an almond joy. Oh, just saying. Oh, so good. So, yeah. Delicious. But I also do put that cocoa powder in my smoothie in the morning. So, yeah. first of all, it helps to mask the flavor because, like, I add things like broccoli and other things along the way because I'm not a big fan of broccoli. So, but I do want to get it in because it's so powerful in terms mm-hmm. of its nutrients. So, yeah that's 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 and then it's if you're eating one of those popsicles it's almost medicinal right i have to eat this it's lowering my blood pressure love it (laughs) it's delicious just saying i mean you know and it's something that tastes good that it's not going to hurt you and i think a lot of people think that you know if you go plant-based that oh my god i'm giving up all these things i'm not going to have anything that tastes good uh no (laughs) That is such a misnomer. And oh my gosh. And if you look at, I have several different Facebook groups. One is plant-based Cape Cod. And I usually post on Sundays. I usually do a lot of batch cooking and we post, I post in there that what I'm making and the food is just it's delicious. It really is. It's yeah, good I've stuff. seen your food. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my smoothie leads into, and this will be the last one we do because we're, we're coming up out of time. We always have so much fun talking. I know. Um, bananas is is another huge one that you can for sure. It, it's an easy easy fix to get, and the banana. The reason why the bananas contain a lot of potassium, which plays a huge role in managing hypertension, without question. Yeah. So one banana, one banana has 422 milligrams of potassium. So, and this reduces the effects of sodium because sodium is huge within it. And if you look up, go back to the periodic table, back to your high school chemistry, look where sodium is, look where potassium is on the periodic table. They're, you're just swapping these ions out. The potassium is helping to deal with the, the sodium. So that alleviates the tensions in the walls of these blood vessels. So, you know, if you can get at least 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day, that would be helpful. Things like that are going to be high in potassium are going to be like avocados, cantaloupe, honeydew melons, mushrooms, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, beans, things like that. But I will caution people because if you're dealing with kidney disease, you need to speak to your doctor because about the potassium because too much can be harmful. And I'll let you expand upon that. I agree with that. Everything you said there, the potassium, and that's also just in a plant-based diet. People are going to get more potassium than sodium if they do a low salt plant-based diet. But my last one that I haven't mentioned yet is my favorite. And I have to say it before we run out of time. And it's the season right now, pomegranates. It is pomegranate season. They're everywhere. They're on sale. We bought boxes of them at Costco. I find them at my grocery store. They're super cheap right now. Get yourself a bowl and you cut it in half and you pound them with a big spoon and the berries fall out. And you can put them on your salads, you can put them in your soup, you can eat them with a spoon, which I do for dessert after my salad. And they help lower blood pressure significantly. They lower cholesterol, but they lower blood pressure. They act like an ACE inhibitor, which is a drug that dilates the blood vessel going to the kidney. So it increases blood flow. So it helps with people with kidney disease. They are high in anthocyanins. They're antiviral. I say that everyone should eat them in the era of COVID. They're antibacterial. They are powerful, 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 wonderful, amazing, and delicious food. So 
please go get some pomegranates if you have high blood pressure. And, and in a study, people drink one ounce a day and had significant lowering of blood pressure and cholesterol when they added that to their diet. So I sometimes add, now I'm eating pomegranates, but when I'm not eating pomegranates, I add about an ounce to my smoothie. Plus it takes away some of the bitterness. So yeah, pomegranates. Wow. Interesting. I just created a new recipe called walnut berry rice squash. Ooh. And oh my God, this is going to be such a good dish for Thanksgiving. But one of the things I start with a medium onion and I draw dry saute it. Then I take those, you know, those boxes of butternut squash that are already pre-cut up. Yep. Okay. I run it through the food processor. So it shreds it. Okay. And then I take some low sodium vegetable broth. I'll add that. And I let those cook for a little bit. And then I add, oh, before I start all of this, I take some cumin seeds and I heat them up and in a dry skillet and it brings the, fl- oh my God, the scent. Oh, just really it's like fragrance is the kitchen, right? And it really brings out the oils in the cumin seeds and it, the flavor is just incredible. So then I'll add that to the, the butternut squash and the onions and the vegetable broth and I add some coriander and then after that cooks for a little bit, then when it's just before it's ready, I'll add three cups of, of brown rice to it and mix that in. And then here's the paste de resistance. Okay. I add one cup of dried cranberries and then one cup I take frozen. I get the frozen pomegranate. I cheat. I get the frozen pomegranate ones. And so I take a cup of those and put them in just long enough to heat the pomegranate seeds. So I'm going to add one cup of walnuts that's chopped and I mix that together. Oh. Healthy and high in everything that's going to help lower blood pressure. So that's a heavy right. dish to make for people working on lowering blood pressure. Right. That's a great Thanksgiving dish. Mm-hmm. And if anybody wants the recipe, just message me. I'd be happy to share that. Awesome. So yeah. Dr. Miller, we're going to be back next week. We're going to be talking about some more foods that can help you to reduce your high blood pressure. But also we're going to go through, Dr. Miller and I are going to comb through the high blood pressure group and take some of your questions that you're posting in the group and let's answer them and let's talk about them. So All right, Dr. Miller, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for connecting. And if anybody has questions, you can tag either Dr. Miller or myself in the Facebook group, and we'd be happy to answer whatever we can to help you. Absolutely. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.